For sure, this is the first Sunday after Easter because ministers who are organized are taking this Sunday off. And the fact that I'm here says a lot about me. More importantly, on the first Sunday after Easter, the lectionary brings us back always the text, the story about Thomas, the one who did not believe in For sure, this is the first Sunday after Easter because ministers who are organized usually take this Sunday off. And the fact that I'm here says a lot about me. But more importantly, on the first Sunday after Easter, the lectionary brings always the story of Thomas, the one who who is known to have doubt about the resurrection of Christ. Much, much have been said across the years and the centuries on this text. Countless sermons and reflections have reminded people that doubting is not necessarily a sin. In fact, doubts are a healthy part of a life of a believer and frequently lead to a deeper faith and spirituality Christian. Christian, we're told, should not be too harsh on our poor doubting da Thomas. However, something has changed in the last few months. We have learned new expressions like fake news and alternative facts. We have discovered that there are people paid to create and spread new conspiracy theories on, on social medias and cable shows. Politicians are not even trying to hide the fact that they're taking a bad news and they're spinning it into something good for society. These days, our problem is not that we are doubting, is that we're not doubting enough. We have moved beyond the just trust me used by a con artist. In many cases, it is very difficult to discern the difference between truth and falsehood. Skepticism has become an important skill to cultivate in order to protect ourselves from major deceptions. So in this context, only a few days after Easter, there might even be a small voice inside of herself wondering if the resurrection really happened or, or was it just a good story made up by the first disciple to uh, promote their agenda and their, their claim. Maybe after all, Thomas was not such a bad guy for doubting. Maybe he became, became our hero. If Thomas is mentioned in all four Gospels in her Bible, it is in the one, according to John, that his personality is revealed, I would say. In the story of the resuscitation of Lazarus, Thomas is like the Debbie Downer uh, of the group when he claimed after Jesus' decide, decision to return to Judea, Let's also go with him, that we may die with him. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and later, when Jesus speaks about his impending death and res ascension to heaven, Thomas essentially replied, Jesus, I have no clue what you're talking about. Like, whew, probably speaking out loud what others were scared or embarrassed to say. Now, Thomas, you see, is this practical, no-nonsense guy. He just calls it as he sees it. So just try to be in Thomas' shoes or sandals. 
One day, some of his very good friends show up and claim they have seen their own master. They have seen the Lord, they say. A few days after Jesus' crucifixion, they declare, many disciples will all, were all gathered in a house. All the doors were locked. And Jesus came and stood in front of them. Honestly, like very honestly, what would you have said in Thomas' place? Yes, I totally believe you. Of course, of course, Jesus' corpse can walk through walls and doors and talk to people. There's nothing strange in all of this. Yeah, sure. Or would you rather remember that if some, something sounds too good to be true, it's probably untrue. Would you demand more proof, assurances, evidence to validate the accuracy of this claim? Would you ask to see and experience it for yourself as they all did? Would you? Well, yeah. Thomas is expected to believe without having seen However, for an average human being, seeing plays an important part in believing. Like, like after a tragedy, uh, like um, the crash of a commercial airplane, for example, the grieving family members and loved ones often feel this urge to go on the site of the accident. They, they want to see debris or anything else that can bring them closer or, or just little something that will help them to go on with life. Well, Thomas, when told about the resurrection, is not close to this news. He just needs a little more in order to believe. He wants to see for himself the marks of the nails and touch them as touching Jesus' side. It just requires some tangible proof. And a few days later, his wish materialized. The risen Christ appeared once again, this time in Thomas' presence. And the disciple came to believe. Maybe one of the reasons Tom, of this Thomas' struggle may be his difficulty to grasp the meaning of resurrection. Last week, I preached on Mary Magdalene, who believed on the first Easter morning that she could resume her life with Jesus as if nothing happened, as if nothing changed. But she eventually understood the difference between Jesus of Nazareth and the risen Christ. And somehow, Thomas follows the same pattern. For many months, uh, he walked alongside of Jesus of Nazareth, and he was expecting somehow the risen Christ would be exactly the same, the same body, the same physical attribute during his life, his death, as his burial. Nothing would have changed, he thinks. However, like I said last Sunday, resurrection implies profound transformation. The risen Christ is not a human being like you and me. It's a new reality that can be experienced everywhere, at any time, by everyone. Through Christ's resurrection, we are invited to address the world from a different perspective. We are called to believe in something maybe bigger than our minds can conceive. And maybe this is why we struggle so much with understanding the concept of the risen Christ. It's much easier to get our head around uh, the, uh, of, the people, of the person of Jesus of Nazareth. He was a man who lived in the Middle East 2,000 years ago. Uh, he was a great teacher. He was charismatic. He was wise. He was very compassionate, invited people to love one another. Everyone, believers or not, can accept this. However, when it comes to the risen Christ, we're unsure. We're unsure about what we can really affirm. 
Oh, we were told in the New Testament that the risen Christ was Jesus, but not quite Jesus, but still Jesus. And we want to say, make up your mind. We're told by ministers and Sunday school teacher that what happened in the tomb is a complete mystery. Well, it does not help us to explain it to our children and grandchildren. You ought to believe this because some dead dude said so is a claim that is difficult to swallow these days. Now, more often, our lack of words and explanation concerning the, the risen Christ makes us feel inadequate. We say that if we we say that if we cannot explain what is considered the cornerstone of our faith, well, if we cannot explain that, what kind of Christian are we? We come to believe that our interrogation and desire for more proof or more evidence or more explanation make us unworthy to be called a believer. Well, the good news for all of us who are struggling with the idea of the resurrection of this idea of the resurrection is that the risen Christ is in the business, if I may say, of finding people where they are. You see, in the gospel according to John, on the first Easter morning, the one is, who is called the beloved disciple, walked inside the tomb, saw it was empty, and believed. Mary Magdalene met the risen Christ in the garden, desired to cling to him, and eventually came to believe by letting him go. And Thomas missed Christ's first appearance uh, to the disciples, demanded more evidence, and believed when he received them. Christ you see, was able to meet different individuals in different ways, and none of them, none, were criticized, chastised, or denigrated. Each and every one of us are different, and we all assimilate knowledge and information in our own ways. For some of us, reading stories in the Bible is enough to accept the promises of God's unconditional love and life beyond death. For others, faith and spirituality are grounded in one profound and transformative experience. And there are some who discover and meet the risen Christ in the radical and unbounded inclusiveness of a group of a congregation that welcomed us when we needed the most. None of our individual journey is better or worse or holier than another. All our experiences are always true. They are always valid. So the story of Thomas is the story of all of us who did not witness with our own eyes all the things the gospel describes. On some days, we struggle. We struggle because there's no one-size-fits-all explanation for faith, for spirituality, for the resurrection. We are not sure whom should we trust. We have doubts, yes. And yet, we come to church. We watch these videos. Somehow, we have come to trust in this unbelievable news proclaimed by Jesus' first disciple, and to trust it because it brings life, it brings hope, it brings something that cannot be described. For our own personal reasons, we have come to say yes to the risen Christ, the one who reaches us, the one who accepts us as we are. And for this, Amen.